Good morning. Good morning. Let's do that again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yay. Okay. Uh, happy Sunday. Uh, welcome to Fort Meade Methodist Church, and thank you for coming to join us in worship today. I had a great morning already. We had 14 little ones in Sunday school, and uh, I don't quite know if we got through the lesson. They always have lots to interject, but that's great. So I always enjoy that. And, um, and we talked about being thankful, thankful that we have a church where we can come to worship and thankful for where we live, that we are in a blessed country, that we have the opportunity to get up on Sunday morning and come to church and fellowship. So we're glad you're here to worship with us. We are a welcoming Bible-based church dedicated to helping people find and follow Jesus Christ. And this is a place for you to explore and your faith and find wholeness and healing as we learn and we all grow in Jesus Christ together. Okay, if you're visiting for the first, Judy is back there on the ready mark to go. Do we have anybody that is the first time you've ever stepped in the Lord's house here at Fort Meade Methodist? Any first time visitors? Nobody? Okay, we're all old faces, okay. But I see new faces, faces that are I know you're coming down because it's getting cold up north, but it's still hot here. <laughs> I looked and it was 94 yesterday as I was riding down the road, and I thought, oh, well. We did a Thanksgiving craft, a fall craft. I said, what season are we in in Sunday school? And the kids said, uh, summer. I said, well, no, we're in fall, but it feels like summer. But, but we're just glad to be here. Um, please remember to fill out in your bulletin today. Uh, there is a yellow card. Uh, fill this out with your name and if you're normally here we have all your information. If you're new here we need your information and put this in the offering plate. If you have any prayer requests or concerns uh, that you would like our prayer team to lift up uh, you can put that on the back sign. Now, if you would like the pastor to lift this prayer during our worship service, uh, if you'll indicate, uh, if anybody has one, Dennis Gunther, raise your hand, Dennis. We'll come to you and pick that up and um, put that uh, for the pastor to address during the um, pastoral prayer. Okay. Like I say, I, it was kind of hectic in Sunday school, so, so I'm still kind of drawing to catch my breath and figuring out where I am. Okay, uh, at this time, we will have our, uh, let me make sure, our opening prayer. That's where we are. Okay, if you'll please bow your heads and join me as we pray. Father God, as we gather here on this holy ground for worship and prayer, we give thanks for the saving work you are doing in our lives. We join the great cloud of witnesses to worship you this morning. We thank you for the rich heritage of our church here in Fort Meade. We thank you for the new things that you are doing here with us, in us, and through us. Give us eyes that can see and ears that hear your calling on us today. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray, amen. Uh, at this time, if you'll please stand and join in the Apostles' Creed, our call to worship. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, let me see what announcements they've got for us this morning. I don't see any. Oh, here they are. I'm sorry. Okay, and I do get this earlier in the week, and I, I just get kind of rattled. <laughs> okay, uh, please join today, right after worship. We have our Thanksgiving uh, fellowship meal. Even if you didn't bring anything, you know how it is in the church. We always have plenty, so come over and meet in Reed Hall for our fellowship dinner after worship today. Uh, everyone is welcome. Tonight, are y'all having Bible study tonight? No. Okay, so that's not an announcement. I'll mark that one out. <laughs> okay. Reminder, the hanging of the greens. I know, Christmas. Some of, I've already seen folks putting up a Christmas, and that's great. I celebrate Christmas every day. Uh, but we'll be hanging the greens here in the sanctuary on Saturday, November 25th at 9 a.m. Volunteers are needed to help us decorate the church. We get it all beautiful and pretty. And so that's the Saturday right after Thanksgiving. And we'll meet here at 9 a.m. We put up the chrismon tree, put the decorations on. And um, so we got that. Also, uh, anybody have any other announcements that I'm missing that need to be mentioned here? Okay. Um, other things that are going on in the life of our church on the back of the bulletin. And so that's there. So, oh, um, <laughs> okay, our Operation Christmas Child boxes. If you've not returned yours, is it tomorrow you're taking them? Uh, Lorraine's going to load them all up and take them to the main place where they package and they kind of check through them and seal them up real good. So if you, you need to get your Operation Christmas Child boxes in, this afternoon. If you have to, call me and I'll meet you down. Or you can bring them tomorrow morning. It's Mel Melanie will be here tomorrow morning. I am confused. <laughs> um, and then also our adopt a family through help organization. If you've not brought your bag and your gift card, if you'll have that here as well, because we try to go ahead and get it down there so Asia and her group can get everything taken care of and get distributed. So we pretty well, yeah, we already did the yellow card. You missed it. My sister's trying to keep up with me. I need people to keep up with me. So, <laughs> okay, at this time, get together and meet one another. Let's pass the peace.
place to hide his weary soul his bag of bones and I tried with all my might and I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting a vagabond and just when I could sing these songs I 
as I often do But every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I
change life. Amen. Amen. And I want to share just a bit. Yesterday, um, I was here. I'm always having to come tinker with our video, trying to get that kind of down pat. And um, I have to have sound, so I play some. And I actually was playing that song, and someone was here. Uh, they come every Saturday. And you may not be aware, but they pray over every pew here in this church. And that was so powerful as I was playing that, working on my sound and video equipment and watching as this person laid their hand on each pew and prayed for today as we worship. And so hallelujah, that was beautiful. And we give great applause to our youth here that lead us every second Sunday. Okay, I'm going to stick to the script now. Our, if you'll join me in our responsive reading. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by his hand. Our scripture this morning is from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The word of God for the people of God. God. Now, Tura, my sister, is going to come lead us in the hymn sing. And I think you have a blue insert, but I'm sure everybody's ahead of me on that one. <laughs> I think, let's make sure it's not on my list. Okay, 394. Hmm? Okay, 394, Beverly. Okay. 696, okay. Can't do 593. That was a repeat from last time. <laughs> That's on my list. 517. One more. What was that one? 367. Six six seven. That's not on the list. 367, Miriam. Okay, 367. All right, we got them. And if you can stand as you're able, we will. but if you can't, that's fine because we're just praising the Lord. Yep. And she said she wasn't going off script again. <laughs> I told Mr. Monday, I bet that's not going to work. All right, 394 is the first one, something beautiful.
26. Seventeen, but I don't find it on my list. No, it's not 517. What was it? It's five seventy-two. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Okay. We got it. Nancy, thank you very much. And Brian, thank you very much. Brian, I thank God for you. We can be confused, but you've always seemed to have it together. Thank you. Yes. And a special thank you to our youth praise team for leading worship this morning. Praise God for them. Before I begin, I want to take a moment to talk about these things on the table down here. We have been uh, working for about a month now, gathering these boxes, these shoe boxes, boxes for Operation Christmas Child. They are shipped all over the world. 
you don't know what continent your box will wind up on. It's a wonderful thing. Um, I've seen videos where they bring these in, and there's so much excitement in the small town and the village where they bring them that everyone listens. They listen to testimonies. They hear about Jesus. People give their heart to Christ. Lives are changed. Their eternal lives are changed through these things. We thank God for them. Also over here, we have these, thanks, these holiday food baskets for folks' Thanksgiving meal. I think we have 20 of these here that uh, we work through our, our ministry partner, Help of Fort Meade, for these. And we want to thank God for all the blessings he pours out on our lives. We thank God that we have so much, so much that we have first world problems. We have to make choices about things some people have to do without. I'd like to take a moment to pray over all of these and for ask God's blessing. Would you join me? Father God, as we prepare these boxes to send out into the world, Lord, we pray. We pray for the, those who receive it. We pray for those who pass it along down the pipeline all the way there. We pray for your special blessing on those that open this box, the child who will open this box as their Christmas gift. We pray for all the hands that are in the process of getting it to them. But most of all, Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon them, that they may receive Christ, that they may know the saving grace that Christ brings. We thank you, Lord, for all the folks that gave of their time and their resources to make this happen. And Lord, this adopt a family, these Thanksgiving gifts, this meal that we pray, prepare to be hand it out right here in our community. Lord, we pray for the families that they represent, with those that have put them together and those that will receive it. Pray for your special blessing on this. Lord, all that we do and all that we are is about Jesus. And we pray that wherever this goes, that he goes too. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So yesterday was a special day, Veterans Day, day we pause to remember those who served in the armed forces. I want us to uh, remember them as we come to our time of prayer. And I'd like to take a moment and ask, those that have served in the armed forces or represent someone that's serving now, would you stand for a moment and be recognized? Jan Jackson can't be with us today. I would like to add her name to those that, that were standing there. I have a couple of cards here, a card from Adele Sneed that she's having uh, trouble walking. Pray for uh, God to help her be mobile. And for Roy Fortin, um, he's been taken to Bartow Hospital this morning. Uh, they're running some tests. Uh, Pray for Roy. Roy's having some mobility issues as well. What else do we have going on in the life of our church? Anything we want to... Glory sightings this morning, yes. My brother Richard, he's had a lot of problems. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Your nephew's wife, Gina, is cancer free. Thank God for answered prayers. Praise God forever. Jennifer.
Yes, yeah, special evangelism outreach service tonight for the youth, uh, uh, grades 6 through 12. And uh, we hope that this place is packed with the youth from here in Fort Meade. Yes. Thank you. The, uh, the choir is putting together Christmas Cantata. It will be on December 17th. Yes, ma'am. I missed the beginning. That was Juan. Juan that couldn't, and he had oral surgery, and he's recovering. He had like 20 stitches, 21 stitches. My apologies. I don't hear as good as I used to. <laughs> so. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Okay. Prayers for the family of Julia. Julia Black. She passed away unexpectedly. She was a senior in high school, right? Junior in high school. Thank you. And we want to continue to pray for them. Uh, this is a difficult time. A lot to process there. We, we will continue to lift them up. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, this morning, we pause to lift up our prayers, Lord, to remember our veterans. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the courage. Thank you for the bravery. Men and women. So many generations. They answered that call to serve, to protect our country. Lord God, we pray for your blessing on them. We thank you for their selfless service to protect our freedom and guard our way of life. And Lord, we remember those who gave their lives. As we pray for protection for those who continue to serve. And Lord, as we pray for our veterans, we pause. And in a moment of silence, pray for those that are at war in Israel and Gaza and those that are at war in the Ukraine. We pause for a moment of silence as we remember them. Lord God, we pray for peace on earth. Peace that only you can bring. Lord, we pray for the day when every conflict will end. Lord, we pray for the day when the vulnerable, those who cannot defend themselves, are no longer threatened by aggression. Lord, for those who are meek, to no longer come under attack. Father God, this morning we pause and pray for our country, the United States of America. Lord, we pray that it will truly become a Christian nation. Lord, you heard the prayers that we lift, lifted up. We remind you of them now, Lord. Family of Julia Black. For my brother Richard. For Juan. For so many, Lord. For Roy and Adele. Lord, we thank you that we can always bring these things to you and that we can trust them in your care. 
Lord, we pray for lost loved ones. Those that are lost in sin and those that deny your grace. Those that won't listen. Those that think they found a better way. Father, we thank you that we can trust them in your hands and that no matter what, you've got this. Father God, we pray for our church, your church here in Fort Meade. We pray for our leaders and all who serve here in ministry and in mission. Help us, help us all to be your witnesses to the world as we contend for the faith. We pray for your will to be done right here, right here in Fort Meade, as it is in heaven. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. At this time, I invite our ushers to come forward as we continue in worship with this morning's offering. Father God, Lord, we bring this offering, this small part of all the blessings we know that you bring down on our lives. Lord, we pray that you'll take this and multiply it to further your kingdom here on earth. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture lesson today is in the book of Acts. We continue our journey through the book of Acts. We're up to uh, chapter 23, verse 11. The words will be on the screen. You can follow along as I read. Would you join me in a prayer for the word? Father God, we pray. Pray for open hearts. Pray for open minds. Eyes that can see, ears that can hear. Lord, we gather here to worship you. Father, I pray. 
we pray that all that we do brings you honor, glory, and praise. Lord, if anything about me or these words that I prepare get in the way, I pray you just sweep that aside. Speak directly to the heart through your perfect spirit. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Acts 23, beginning at verse 11. Ending at verse 11. That night, the Lord stood near him and said, Keep up your courage. For just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also in Rome. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus stood near him. It's comforting to know that God stands near you, doesn't isn't it? How many of you feel like God stands by you? When things are bad or when things are good? All the time. time. Jesus stood near him. There's a lot of old sayings about standing that I want to remind us of. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. If we don't stand together, we'll fall apart. Don't just stand there, do something. Don't just do something. Stand there. Because doing something by our own strength can wear us out, can it? Keep trying and keep trying and keep trying till we come unraveled. I want to share an old story about a guy who was going to a costume party. Now, I'm not much for costume parties. He decided to go. Party's on a Sunday, and of course he waits till the last minute to try to figure out what he's going to wear when he goes there. Gets down to the shop, they only got one thing left that'll fit him, a devil costume. Going to go in a red suit with a tail and this tight-fitting mask that fits so tight it almost seemed real. Sunday comes around, Sunday evening, and he starts walking down there. It's only a few blocks away. It starts raining. So running some shelter from the rain, he runs in the first door he sees and he runs into a church and service is about to let out just as he opened the door big flash of lightning a clap of thunder and there he is illuminated in the doorway everybody starts running for the exits (laughs) thinking the building might be on fire he follows them he starts running after them everybody gets out this one lady she stops she looks at him she says I know I've been a member here. I've been in this church for years and years and decades. And says, but I've always been on your side. (laughs) What was she saying? I surrender. I give up. You win. I'm too afraid to go on. She was so afraid that Satan was going to hurt her, she abandoned her faith. Surrendered to the enemy, or at least who she thought was the enemy. Now, of course, this never happened, and yes, it's kind of funny. But there are times, aren't there, when us Christians, we cave in. When we surrender to evil, we give up. We refuse to stand firm in the faith. Most of the time, it's more of a little gradual slippage little inch by inch step away, small, seemingly harmless compromises, slow separation from God. In the history of the church, in our own church history, we can see where even a little bit of compromising take us all the way away from God. One small step at a time. Believers cut themselves off from God. The spiritual battle is real. Satan works to get in to relax the little things so that we get confused and abandon the main thing. Jesus is Lord. He saves. We all need him. We're lost without him. And that's why the Bible repeatedly tells us to stand firm. We see it in the Old Testament, the New Testament. Moses stood firm right in front of Pharaoh until the people were 
allowed to leave Egypt. Moses, in Exodus 14, he tells the Israelites, stand firm, right, looking at the Red Sea and the army behind him. Stand firm. Watch what the Lord is about to do for you. Joshua, people stand in their faith in front of the walls of Jericho, and those walls came down. Queen Esther stood in front of the king, risked her life to save her people. There's one thing about all these people that have in common, the most important thing. All they did was stand there. God did the work. They didn't win. They didn't get victory because of their own actions, because of their own strength. Their success was not accomplished because of personal power. We talked about that last week. That can get you in trouble, can it? They didn't win the day because they were influential, could give a good speech, had a political following. They overcame evil because they trusted God and they stood their ground. And we can faithfully stand our ground because we know Jesus stands nearby. Don't just do something. Stand there. Stand there in faith. Trust that the Lord is standing with you in all things. When things get hard, when we find ourselves battling the difficulties of life, the storms of life come our way, there's peace in knowing. God's got this. God's got you. God will take care of things. No matter what. No matter what, God's got this. And we can count on God. Now, sometimes we feel all alone when we're standing there for God, don't we? Standing up there all by yourself. My grandfather used to say, there you stand with your bare face hanging out. Feeling pretty lonely. Many of the stories of the Bible are about men and women. On their faith, they stood all alone. But it was their faith and their courage in times of danger, in difficult times, that made all the difference. I mentioned Queen Esther. She approached the king. No one does that unless God is with you. Elijah, he stands before King Ahab, Jezebel, and all those prophets of Baal, all alone. And God showed the world just how big our God is. It can be intimidating to stand on your convictions. I'd like to say that we can be afraid to stand alone, but who isn't? When God calls, the first thing that happens is we have a crisis in belief, right? Couldn't have meant me. I must have been standing in the way. It must have been somebody behind me. We're always afraid when we stand alone. And in our world today, we come under attack. In our world today, we feel like we're being attacked. And that's because Christians are being attacked. Don't kid yourself. From government authorities, business interests, activist groups, they got their own sense of order, their own sense of justice. And if you disagree with them, you're the bad guy. There's a growing trend against Christian values. In our world today, the attack will come. And it comes often from people who want to claim fairness. And what's that look like? We all know what that looks like, don't we? Compelling conformity of thought. Agree. Agree with their ideas. Agree with their values, their wishes, their dreams, their opinions. And what happens when you disagree? Get called names, don't you? Christians and Christian values are under attack. And we're getting it from all sides. We need to remember, long, long time ago, King Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. 
We can feel picked on all we want. This has been going on since the beginning. How did Christ wind up on that cross? Psalm 56, verses 1 through 4. Be gracious to me, God, for a man has trampled upon me. Fighting all day long, he oppresses me. My enemies have trampled upon me all day long, for they are many who fight proudly against me. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise. In God, I have put my trust. I shall not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Thanks be to God. We stand firm to honor God and God's order for life. We are being attacked for our Christian values. Jesus stands by us to give us that courage, courage to testify for him, to tell a world in need what he has done for us. I want to share an old saying from Abraham Lincoln. He said, be sure you put your feet in the right place, then stand firm. The question is, how do you know when your feet are in the right place? It was a few years ago, COVID came, changed our world. Everybody started telling us, we got us a new normal now. We learned to hate those words. We kept saying, we need to go back to the way it was. We need to go back to how things used to be. How's that working for you? Got us a new normal, didn't we? Who's the author of that new normal? God himself. Don't give credit to anybody. God's got this and God's got you. Don't confuse a way of life with Christian values. Be sure your feet are in the right place and then stand firm. I grew up in a rural area here in South Florida, near the east coast of Florida. It was swampy. As I look back, it was maybe a little more dangerous than I realized. I was a kid. I didn't know. There were snakes, gators, wild animals. Sometimes we'd trap a boar, my brother and I. We weren't even 10 years old. In that swampland, you had to be pretty careful where you put your feet. There were always a narrow path to follow. It was white, and you knew when you put your foot there, if you kept your eyes open, might be a critter there. If you knew you put your foot there, you were standing on firm foundation. It was in the right place. The Bible is our right place. It is our path. If we keep our eyes open, this is where we stand. It's the foundation of our faith. Reading the Bible, we discover, we learn, we get reminded, and we get confident in what is right and what is wrong. God is not interested in our opinion about what is right or what is wrong. God is not influenced by preachers or teachers or anyone that ignores sin. God's not interested in editorials that rationalize sin. God's not swayed by governmental laws that want to make it legal to do immoral things. The Bible is the inspired word of God. God telling us. He is God and we never will be. We either line up with God's way or we're wrong. Whatever the Bible says, that's where you put your feet. And then your feet are in the right place. Put them there and stand firm. For the past several weeks, we've been on a journey through the book of Acts. We've got a couple more weeks to go. As we've read this, as we've seen this, we have seen the growth in the Apostle Paul. From a young smart aleck, 
holding the coats while they killed Stephen. To the one that wrote most of the New Testament. Paul's theology has grown. He grew from a life in strict adherence, obedience to the law of Moses, to a life in grace. Complete change. His relationship with God has grown from obedience, strict adherence to a lifestyle following an old, tired tradition. He moved to loving relationship in total dependence on the grace of God. And how does he know that grace of God? Through Jesus Christ, through the Son of God and the Son crucified, the Son resurrected, the Son ascended into heaven. Jesus, the Messiah, the Holy One of Israel. Paul's journey took a major turn on that road to Damascus, didn't it? He had an encounter with Christ. That changes all of us. You have an encounter with Christ and your life is never the same. He says, Go. he sent to Ananias, who did not want to see him. Ananias, arguing with God, said, God, you know, this guy's trying to kill us, trying to wipe us out. God says, go and tell him all the things that he's going to have to suffer for me. Right up front, Paul's told all the things he's going to have to suffer for Christ. Every step of the way, he knew this journey was going to be difficult. A difficult, hard life. Rejection. Pain. And he kept coming back. And like Paul... Our life with Christ, our journey with Christ, our walk with Jesus changes over time. In the beginning, everything's new and it's exciting. We've been forgiven a lot. The weight of that's taken off of us. And it feels so good, so freeing. A freedom we never felt so amazing. But in time, we begin to mature in Christ. We don't feel those same spiritual highs. Then we have this argument going on in our head. Am I losing it? Am I drifting away from God? Am I, what's going on? What am, I, what am I to make of this? I remember that moment on the mountaintop. Can't live your life on the mountaintop. As we mature in Christ, our spiritual life it intensifies. It grows deeper and stronger. That's why we talk about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit of God. That people see in us and then look on us with wonder. How can we have such love, such peace, such joy during those difficult seasons of life? How can we have so much patience when we keep getting challenged again and again? Same people, same thing. How can we reach out in kindness to those who don't want to know us? A life of goodness, full of generosity. How do we remain faithful when we're faced with this new normal that we didn't want? A life of gentleness and self-control. That's what the world sees in us the indwelling Holy Spirit of God shining through us for the world to see. And throughout the journey, the Lord stands by us. He is always there. That's what we see in Paul. His boldness, that bold faith. He's zealous for God as he plods on to being stoned, to being kicked out of the synagogue, He's fulfilling his calling, and he's trusting God in all things. You and I are on the same journey with God. Same journey as Paul. Like Paul, we have an encounter with Christ, and it changes our life. Like Paul, it will not always be easy. There are going to be hard times. There will be times we have to stand up for God. And feel like we're alone. There will be times. 
when you've got to be bold in your faith, even when you don't want to. What is it that holds us back from being bold in our faith? One big reason. We want people to like us. And God says it's not about you. It's all about Jesus. Keep the main thing the main thing. Don't let a thousand little compromises talk you out of it. He is the one. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And no one gets to the Father except through him. And he is for everyone. Jesus said that he would always be with us. He promised, I'll be with you to the end of the age. And then I'll come again and be with you more. Paul is encouraged by Jesus standing by him. Paul can stand firm in his faith because he knows no matter what comes, the Lord is standing by him. And like Paul, you can stand bold in your faith because no matter what life throws at you, no matter what, the Lord is standing by you. No matter what we face, what, no matter what we face, no matter what challenges to our faith come along, remember, God's got this. None of it surprises God. Have courage. Be bold in Christ. And praise God forever. Amen. Amen. Would you stand and join us for our closing hymn, Stand By Me? So as we bring the service to a close, I want to remind you, the fellowship meal in the fellowship hall, please I hope that all of you would join us. Please feel welcome and come and join us. Remember, as we take to the streets, wherever you go, wherever you are, whoever it is that needs to hear what Christ has done for you, Jesus is standing right there with you. Would you join me in a prayer for our fellowship meal? Lord God, Father, we give you thanks for all the abundance that we know, for all the gifts and all the pleasures that we know in this life. Lord, you've always said, those that a lot, are given, a lot is given, a lot is expected. Father, today we pause to give you thanks. Lord, we pray that you'll bless the food, bless the conversation, and bless the hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name, amen.